Hey, how you doing guys? Lewis here with Fedivo with another camera related discussion episode where today we're going to be talking about Canon's cinema camera lineup and what is likely coming next year in 2024. Their lineup currently consists of the C700, the C500 Mark II, the C300 Mark III, the C200, the C70 and if we want to count it, the Canon R5C which is a hybrid mirrorless but heavily skewed with video features. Now over the last five to 10 years, with camera innovation rocketing through the roof, we've seen annual releases from every manufacturer trying to outdo each other with bigger and better features. However, if I was to ask you what cameras came out in 2023 that blew your mind, I think we would say there hasn't been that many. In fact, maybe even in 2022. Now, some could argue that this could be down to the COVID years where there's the chip shortage, which may have halted R&D. But I quite simply think we've got to the point where camera technology is so great that there's no point releasing models each and every year when the newest feature may just be fixed with a firmware patch. And instead, we're going to have to wait a good couple of years to see that newest model. However, in general, Canon is quite slow with their cinema camera releases. For example, the C300 Mark II was announced back in September 2015, and the Mark III didn't come out until April 2020. Likewise, the original C500 was released in 2012, with the Mark II following in September 2019. So on average, we're looking at a new cinema camera from Canon every seven years or so. So you might be thinking, okay, are we on the verge of seeing a new one, possibly in 2025? Well, I would say we're more likely going to see one next year. And the reason for that is because Canon themselves are cannibalizing their own cinema line. Let me explain. So there are two primary factors at play here. The first is the discontinuation of their legendary EF mount. The last time that we saw a camera natively ship with the EF mount was the 1DX Mark III, which is a stills camera primarily aimed at professional sports photographers. On the matter, Canon's CEO said, Canon's SLR flagship model is known as the EOS 1 series, the first of which appeared in 1989. The latest model, the EOS 1DX Mark III, released in 2020, will be the last model. That's fine. It is time to move on. There was only so much further innovation that could be uh, created with the EF system. However, since that statement, and Canon did initially say that it's not necessarily the end of that, they have been discontinuing EF lenses at a vast rate from household regular lenses to specialist lenses that you're only going to find at certain outlets. Again, it's okay to be doing that if we're moving towards the RF system. However, given that from the C200 right the way up to the C500 Mark II, these flagship cinema cameras all use the EF mount, it does become a little bit of a hiccup if you've already shifted to an RF lens ecosystem. If you're coming from the C300 Mark III and perhaps you want to go to the new mirrorless route and pick up an R5, that's not going to be too much of a hindrance because we can use an EF adapter. However, if you have first invested into their stills range, say an R5 or an R6, and then want to pick up a larger cinema camera for more professional needs, then you're gonna be a little bit out of luck as you're gonna to have to invest entirely into a new lens range as we can't go from RF to EF. Now, before we talk about where Canon is heading in 2024, I don't think we can do so without discussing its current flagship model, or at least what I would consider its current flagship model as it's more attainable than the C500 Mark II or the C700 and it boasts numerous extra features than the C200. So it's the C300 Mark III. And if you're new to this channel, you should know that this was a camera that I owned. I have stated publicly on many videos on our channel that it was the greatest camera that I've ever owned and I regret selling it. And I think about that mistake at least a few times a month. The camera always had some great quality of life features that just made it so good to use. This includes the fantastic built-in ND system, as well as dual XLR ports, which are great for your run and gun filmmaking operations. 
you can record up to DCI 4K, which uses its full Super 35 sensor. And it also boasts up to 16 stops of a dynamic range, partly due to the implementation of the dual gain output. It features in-body stabilization, 4K 120 frames per second, Canon's great autofocus, and it's incredibly modular for smaller indie builds all the way up to larger builds for feature films and sports filming. The list goes on. It is a fantastic camera and I regret selling it every single day. Uh, it was originally priced for £10,500. It has since been reduced to around about £8,600 and you can get it for even less on the aftermarket for a used model. But this is where things get tricky and why I think we're on the verge of a new camera in 2024. So as previously noted in the later part of 2020, Canon introduced the C70, their first video focused cinema camera using the RF system. It was on the lower end of the mid tier budget set to sit against the likes of the FX6, the Red Komodo and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema line, essentially a stepping stone for those who had been creating content on their mirrorless cameras and wanted to move towards a more video focused designed system without dropping 10K. At the time, the C70 was nearly 60% of the cost of the C300 Mark III and the features showed it. No RAW, no in-body stabilization and the color not as great as the more prestigious models. However, since the C70's release, we have seen multiple firmware updates, some small, some very significant, but over time, the camera has evolved into something completely different. Now with the likes of Canon RAW, multiple intra-frame recording capabilities, eye-locking autofocus, better color rendition with the Canon 709 color profile, and many, many more quality of life updates, the gap between the C300 Mark III and the C70 is not that significant, but the price difference is. Now, you can definitely argue that the C300 Mark III has a very different form factor. It can be integrated into a lot more workflows with its modular setup, it has an SDI output. However, we also do have to acknowledge that given that 90% or so of the internal features can now be reached with the C70, it would leave me with the question as to why you would pay £4,000 more for a camera when the C70 does the job. So what's next? Well, we're certainly not in the business of reporting on rumors. However, given that the EF lens has seen a massive discontinuation with various lens models and that the C70 has received so much love catching up to the C300 Mark III, which has not received that much love in terms of firmware updates, and of course has an EF mount. I think we're on the verge of seeing the Canon C200 Mark II. Now various outlets have reported on possible C200 Mark II features and it's been suggested that it will have the same image sensor and connection ports as the C300 Mark III, be compatible with the C300 Mark III and C500 Mark II accessories, include time code, an SDI terminal, and of course the elusive RF mount. The C200 initially cost $7,500, which is currently a few thousand more than the C70 and a few thousand less than the C300 Mark III. And I think this would be a good entry point for a new video build better than the C70, which comes with some of the newer technology that's arrived on the scene over the last few years. And I think Canon really do need a win with this camera, given how much of the spotlight Sony has recently claimed with the likes of the FX3 and how it was used to film the creator more or less entirely. All right, well, I've been Lewis with Fidevo. If the C200 Mark II comes out next year, I want everybody who has watched this video to come back and comment you were right. And uh, if you've enjoyed this, let us know, and we'll catch you guys next week with another tutorial.